that, that may be in close proximity to the star. So what we did in 2004, we used uh, a new instrument aboard Hubble called the Advanced Camera for Surveys, which has a special device called a coronagraph. A chronograph essentially produces an artificial eclipse of bright stars, thereby removing the glare from the star so we could be sensitive to the faint light from planets. The big surprise in 2004 was that we didn't see the planet immediately. We saw this vast dust belt circling the star. This is an analog to our Kuiper belt, uh, a system of icy bodies that are colliding and continually producing dust that we can see in reflected light. And back then what we saw is that the belt has several unusual features which we hypothesized could be due to the gravitational uh, perturbations from a planet that had not been seen yet. So with this hypothesis in mind, we returned to Fomalhaut in 2006 with the Advanced Camera for Surveys obtained even deeper and uh, more accurate images of the belt, but also found a faint point source to the lower right. Now uh, we'll see a box, a white box, uh, show up to the lower right, and that faint speck is Fomalhaut B. Here it is in 2004, and here it is in 2006. Fomalhaut B is moving because it's orbiting uh, the star Fomalhaut just within the dust belt, thereby satisfying our hypothesis that the belt is governed by this planet. You can see the orbital motion is actually counterclockwise, and Fomalhaut B completes an orbit in uh, roughly 800 years. How do we know Fomalhaut B is a planet? Well, we use two different uh, techniques, and we come out with the same answer. First, we measure the brightness of Fomalhaut B. It turns out Fomalhaut B is one of the faintest objects outside of our own solar system. It's one billion times fainter than the central star. If Fomalhaut B were a brown dwarf or a star, uh, we would have seen it to be much brighter and easily detectable. We are confident from the faintness of Fomalhaut B, that it's less than three Jupiter masses. The other technique we used is illustrated in this animation, uh, which uh, shows the gravitational effects of a planet on a dust belt. The thing to keep in mind is that the dust belt is being sculpted by the gravity of the planet. And by measuring how close the planet is to the dust belt, we can estimate the mass of the planet. Because, in fact, if Fomalhaut B were very massive, the gravity from a massive planet would completely disrupt the dust belt. For the dust belt to be preserved in its current state, Fomalhaut B has to be less than three Jupiter masses. In fact, our lower limit to Fomalhaut B is a Neptune. To tell you more about uh, Fomal Hot B, I'll uh, turn it over to uh, my colleague Mark Clampen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, if we can have the first uh, image, please. One of the key aspects of this.